Welcome to Testimony Tuesday, brought to you by Experience Church of Bethpage. This is Lauren and Dave, and we're blessed to be talking to everyday people who have stories of how God's favor, kindness, and mercy have intervened in their lives. Join us as we experience our living God's compassion and love through their testimonies. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Testimony Tuesday. And we are sitting here with our friend, Mary. Hi, everybody. (laughs) So, Mary, I met you a couple of months ago, and I remember when we met that you just had such a such a sweet demeanor about you. You just were very, very smiley and you could just see the joy inside of you. And I loved that. And I remember when you said you wanted to give your testimony and I was so thankful for that because I really didn't know you so well. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you were so willing to come forward and just share what the Lord's done, it was just really telling about the kind of person that you are. and, And I just was very touched with that. I think you're wonderful. And I think that you're always just very kind. Thank you. Like I said, you always have just such a sweet smile about you. So, you know, that being said, I'm very thankful that you've come forward. Dave and I both really appreciate it. And I know that Dave and I both value people's stories so much that we really are looking forward to hearing about what God's done in your life you know, and just how he's kind of manifested in your own life in ways that that brought you to a deeper walk with him. So we are looking forward to hearing you share. I just want to say that I'm very impressed with the ministry. And um, I believe in soul winning. Amen. You know, going out and sharing the gospel. Amen. One of the greatest ways in scriptures was that Jesus healed or people were healed by him, Mm. and they came to faith. And I still believe that when we walk with the Lord, we love him enough to obey him. Yes. That he will use us in ways we've prayed about and asked him, because as you read scripture, God will touch your heart, your heart strings, and you will pray for the certain giftings that touch you, that he does in the scripture. So yes. I always prayed that. Yes. You know, Amen. and I, I, Amen. one of the things I always pray for is for an ear to hear in the spirit and eyes to see in the spirit, mm. not to believe what I'm seeing in the natural and not to believe what I'm hearing in the natural because yes. I am a nurse mm. and I work, you know, in a, in the medical community in a hospital. Yes. Um, so with that background, I'll get into my story. Mm. Uh, in 2018, I took my mother down to Florida. She had just recovered after being sick with her. She's a brittle diabetic. And I took her down to Florida with me on vacation. And it was like uh, February. Mm-hmm. And the second day down, uh, we woke up early in the morning. And she was sitting on the sofa in my condo. Mm -hmm. And we were talking and she goes, well, what do you want to do today? She was still in her nightgown and I was in my pajamas. Yeah. And she said, uh, I said, I don't know. What do you want to do? This could do anything. It's a beautiful day. And she said, well, let's go fishing because there was a long pier Hmm. near my house. So I was like, okay. And I started to put, I I had the fishing rods out from the night before. Hmm. I started to put the line through the eyes of the rod. Mm -hmm. And as I was, we were talking, my mother said she was tired and she leaned her head back and it appeared like she had gone to sleep and I was still talking and I said, mom, can you hear me? Because I had asked her a question Yeah. and she didn't respond. I went over to her and I hit her shoulder and I said, can you hear me? And she didn't move. And then I did like a CPR move where I hit both of her shoulders. And I said, can you hear me? Are you okay? And she kind of went. Oh, my gosh. And I felt for a pulse and she had no pulse. Wow. So my mother went into um, what's called a pulseless electrical arrest. Uh, She went into a cardiac arrest. 
I called 911 I, before I, they're right around the corner from my condo, so before I could even put her to the floor and start pumping her, her chest, they were already there. They took her in the ambulance, they gave her one shot of epi in the ambulance, and they were doing CPR in between, and I washed up and I got dressed and I followed the ambulance. Obviously, that took me like at least like 10 to 15 minutes to get dressed and then another 5 to 10 to get to the hospital. So yeah. when I got to the hospital in the emergency room, the doctor came up to me, the attending who was running the code, and he says, oh, he says, you know, um, your mom's Marianne. I said, yes. And he said, um, oh, well, you know, she came to right away after the shot of epi in the ambulance. And I mm -hmm. said, really? He goes, yeah, she said to stop resuscitating her. So we stopped over 20 minutes ago. And hmm. I said, no, 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 no. I said, she's just depressed. My stepdad passed away not too long ago, less than a year, and she won. And she, he said that she said that, that mm -hmm. she just wanted to go home with him. And I said, no, no, she's depressed. He said, well, she made perfect sense to me, and you're an, a nurse, a registered nurse, so you understand we have to honor her as a patient because she was coherent at that time, and she spoke clearly. Oh, my. So I literally wow. sat outside the cubby of my mother's emergency room watching the monitor, watch, watching my mother die on the monitor. Wow. wow. Her colors were changing because my mom, you know, she's very light-skinned. And her color started to change from like red to blue to gray. Her pulse was dropping. She had no spontaneous circulation. I'm going to tell you that she was down for the count. I was there at least 20 minutes, and he said that it was already going 20 or 25 minutes, that she had already said she didn't want to be resuscitated. So they honored her from the, e from the EMS when she was bought, when she was in the actual truck. Wow. Anyway... I was just sitting outside of her room, and I was telling the Lord. They didn't know I was a Christian. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything. I wasn't obvious um, about anything, and I was just saying to the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, just forgive me, Lord. You know, I'm a sinner. Just please forgive me if I have any sin in my heart. And mm -hmm. I said, um, if I have any unforgiveness, you know, I forgive, you know, whoever it is known and unknown. And I, I said, Lord, you hear the prayers of one person. And I know, Lord, yes. you hear the prayer. You heard the prayers of Elijah. You heard the prayers of David to keep the yes. sun out, Elijah to keep, you know, to hold up the rain for three years and then let it rain again. Amen. And I said, I know you hear the prayers of one person. One yes. person's prayers can change a nation. Absolutely. So I thank you, Lord. And I just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Please do not require my mother's soul if she's not going to make it to heaven. Right. And my mother always would say, I know Jesus. He loves me. Yeah. But, you know, the fruit was not always there. Okay. So I watched as my mother was there. They came in after a few minutes I was there, and they stood there. There were th three doctors, mm -hmm. with the uh, two doctors with the attending, and a male nurse. <laughs> and they were in a huddle. Uh, the attending, his back was to my mother. He was standing at her knees facing the other two doctors that were in the code. And I don't even know why they were there, because technically they didn't have to do anything but watch her or wait for her to pass. Yeah. He was discussing with them, we're going to call it. I think we're going to call it. And they were like shaking their head, yes. Oh you know, my. it's already been so long. Wow. So he turned like unexpectedly. And he smacked my mother on the chest. Like he reached forward. He was at her knees, okay. his back, and he turned around and smacked her on the chest. And he said, Marianne, if you can hear me, say any, say something, say anything. And she didn't answer. And he told the male nurse, you know, just get the paperwork. We'll sign off on it with the date and time. So when the male nurse left, my mother, she lifted her arms and she went, oh. Oh, my God. She came back to life. Oh, my God. His jaw dropped. He turned around, and he looked at her, and he looked at the monitor, and there was just <laughs> one big, fat, like, really wide, wide, complex heartbeat. Like, it was a wide, you know, agonal beat. It wasn't, like, enough to pump blood, It's you know, okay. to the brain. Um, he 
tapped her really hard on both of her shoulders on her chest. And he says, Marianne, if you could hear me speak coherently, say something I can understand, because obviously she was a very long time without oxygen to her brain. Yes. And my mother had like three beats now and on the monitor, but her blood pressure was not coming. And her O2 sat was like in the tank. It was low. It was way below like 90. And she grabbed the handrail of the stretcher and mm -hmm. said, do whatever, screaming, like terrified. I've never seen my mother like that. She was one of 12 children. She was like very strong, grew up in Brooklyn during the Depression, everything. And she was screaming, so terrified. And she said, do whatever you have to do to keep me in this place. I'm in fire and I'm burning <gasps> in that place. <gasps> do whatever you have to do to keep me here. Keep me in this place wherever I am. Oh, my gosh. And I jumped off my chair, and I grabbed her foot, and I said, Mom, call on the name of Jesus. I said it really <gasps> loud. And she goes, Jesus, Oh, save my gosh. Me. And right then, the blood pressure cuff started cycling, and she got we got a pressure, 55, like over 30. It was crazy. It was so low. And then it went. It, she was not on any medication because she requested no nothing. But now she did. She was coherent, but they didn't start anything right away. They didn't start pressers, nothing, nothing, nothing to improve her heart rate, to kick it up, nothing. Wow. So, yeah. So uh, we, the pressure was going up and up. It was picking up very nicely. Her heart rate went up to like 50, 53, 52. So wow. my mom, after that incident, she repented of her sin. Wow. She invited Jesus into her heart. I'm not going to say she was 82, and she started to get dreams, a lot of dreams of heaven, of Jesus, mm -hmm. and she never read the Bible. And I'll just tell you one story quick, and we'll just finish with that. But like a month or two later, she had a dream uh, of heaven, and she said she didn't want to tell me over the phone because I had her in an assisted living down there. Okay. And she said, I said, well, what was the dream? And she said, you have to come. I'm going to tell you in person. So I went and drove a half an hour and I was listening to her. And she said, um, I was on the clouds. I was far away. And Jesus is sitting on a throne. Oh, and it's a very big throne. It has gemstones in it and it's gold. Mm. And there's thousands upon thousands and Tens of thousands of children, play. he plays with them. Oh. It takes each one yeah. at a time, tickling them, bouncing them oh. on his knees. And oh. she said, there, there's, um, and we were in the clouds, and he motioned to me to come to him. He held his arm out. Wow. And she said, we weren't speaking words, but it was mind to mind. He knew all my thoughts. Wow. And he said to come. So I started to come closer to him, and she said there were two very big angels, one on each side of him. And I said, well, I wanted to just see if she was, you know, how far it could go, like with the Bible to see if it lined up. I said, well, what did they look like? She said they were really big. Oh, and he's really big. And she said that they had three sets of wings, and they cover their eyes with the, the first set. She said that when her hand touched his hand, that she was telling him mind to mind. She was like, Lord, it's so beautiful here. I've never had a peace like this ever. And I want to stay here forever. And he says, no, you have to go back just a little while. He goes, mm -hmm. you'll go back for a little while, but then you'll come back to me. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay, Lord. And then she woke up in the emergency room. You know, like, well, that she woke up from her dream and told me the dream, but like her life turned around after that. I was going to ask you yeah. that. So like, wait. She was I'm, telling everybody about like Jesus, so that he's in the real this. thing. Yes. She was but like, everybody. just just the fact that, like just in that hospital bed when she was literally near death and does she remember, did she remember? She did not remember the hell. Okay. But that was a near-death experience. Yes. And when she said that to me, so many things the Holy Spirit has uh, revealed to me through so many experiences I've had yeah. uh, since that. Yeah. He teaches 
he's teaching us yes of about course. what's going Amen. on and that there is a spiritual battle yes for your soul yes and we're not to believe what we see with our natural eye that's right so i stopped believing what i see with my natural Amen. eye awesome when people are sick in the hospital yeah i mean i could tell you stories that yes and you'll come back definitely <laughs> of even some of them are even funny no it's amazing because i'm sure you have so many but you know i'm curious though you said that she didn't remember being in hell and everything later she lived another six years by the way she just passed last year that's amazing but yeah. did she remember you running in there and shouting to her to speak the name of jesus i don't remember i didn't ask her Wow. But I asked Did her the she, doctors, like, how did they oh, the react doctors, in the room? Well, the doctor's jaw was, like, on the floor. The, the attending. Yes. He was like, Mr., you know, I've run so many codes, and this is just another, you know. <laughs> yes, like, a number you on know, the table. A, a, do not wow. resuscitate. Do not, you know, yeah, nothing. Just so. So the just, doctor's mouth was on the floor. Yeah, so he, and when he heard her, he was, like, they were all, like, shocked. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was wow. clutching the bed, holding on to the bed. Wow. Yeah. We got to hold on to Jesus like that. Yes. Yeah. And then, you know, she lived another six years telling everybody about Jesus. And then she sh recently stroked and then she stroked again. And the Lord took her home. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is amazing. I've seen amazing things after this. Yes. And... The Lord spoke a lot to me after, you know, during COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just praise the Lord. That's all. Yes. God is so worried. There's so, so many. So uh, this, many. It, the reality is not this life. Right. I never believe anything. A chair is a chair. Yeah, it's a chair, but it's not really here. What's really here is just the heaven or hell. You just, right. You know. Yes. And what we did for the Lord will stand. Yes. Everything else is going to go. Everything wow. else. No, absolutely, and I, I, I'm and I'm not a perfect fully. person. Of course not. None of us. You are. know, none of us yeah. are perfect. But God knows your heart. He That's knows right. the things that you've gone through. He yeah. knows your heart when you're doing things for people. He knows where you are. Yes, the intentions. Yeah. Yes, He knows mm -hmm. all of that. He's yep. very well aware of it. Mm -hmm. Thank God He is. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against powers and principalities, dominions, yeah. rulers of darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness, and I've seen them all. Wow. And you know, death is a lie. That's the devil's right. a liar. That's right. I had a strained relationship with my mother. Okay. But I loved my mother. Yes. And I was good to my mother. Mm -hmm. But my mother would always have, like, strange ways of making money. Mm-hmm. Like lawsuits and stuff like that so when mm -hmm. i say she didn't have the fruit you know her lifestyle was off of her lips it was things in her you know her actions mm -hmm. you know and um my siblings and i we would share the gospel with her and you know we would laugh when she would say oh he loves me he knows me you know like yeah. we would just laugh because yeah. none you know yeah um it's a deception mm -hmm. and we get deceived Mm -hmm. So I think the best way to deal with that is not even to push the issue sometimes. Yeah. Because you're not going to get anywhere. And we can't do miracles in our own house or in our own, you know, Jesus went into his own town and he said, it's, you know, we have to have other people come in. So yeah. what do we do? We go to the Lord and we pray that mm -hmm. other people come in their path. So that's basically what I did. I held her in prayer. Yes. Until this incident. And thank God you were outside of that room. Thank God I was the daughter in there, you know. Yes. There with her on that code. Yes. She coded another time in August of 2015. She went into flash pulmonary edema wow. at St. Joe's Hospital. Wow. And uh, they intubated her. And we locked hands in prayer. And as we were praying, the x-ray tech was breaking our hand holding and wow. like everybody was like like yeah this, nice locked, yeah, try, locked, but you know no. holding securely yeah and we kept praying no matter what they absolutely they were commenting you believe this they think that her prayers are going to be heard blah, blah, blah. Oh my. but guess what 
Yes, they, they were. extubated my mother in like <laughs> so quickly. Yes. She was intubated one night, Praise extubated God. the next. Our friend, the cardiologist, Hallelujah. <laughs> came in and he's like, I've never seen this before. So wow. God was with her. He wanted her. Yeah. You know, and God is faithful to the end. Yes. When he wants a soul. Yes. When he wants a soul and, there's, and we're there in that presence. Mm. When you hear something bad, you're there to be the one that stops the spiritual warfare. Wow, yep. We have that authority over yes, we do. every principality, mm. the spirit of death, destruction, accidents, injuries, illness, death, suicide, depression. We have mm. that authority. Mm -hmm. And when you hear bad news, I, I don't want to just say intercede. We're there to cut it off. Yes, absolutely. We're his power. I love that. Yeah, amen. We're, mm -hmm. we're there to just enough. Mm -hmm. Enough. We're the light and salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. And we he's given us all power and authority to cast out demons, heal the sick, and raise the dead. Yes. And do more than that because we believe. Mm -hmm. You know? So yes. God is good. He's very faithful. Yes. And I just I can't say enough. I've had so many brain dead patients come back to life with after several EEGs. Mm hmm CT scans, um, attendings, writing their their note, their final note, you know. Yes, patients, but we know who has the final brain note. Brain dead. We can go take their organs now. Nope. <laughs> and then there's little old me. Yeah. To pray. I can. Wow. Yeah. Wow, Mary, yeah. that was so amazing. I love that you shared that because what a powerful, what a powerful moment to be able to be a part of, you know, that he just Amen. really allowed you it's to be. It's a privilege. I was just going to say it's Such a privilege, a privilege because he allowed you to be part of mm -hmm. that powerful miracle mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And from beginning to end, just that you were the one that was in the room with her, you know, in Florida, that you were the one that was sitting there, the nurse sitting there, and you knew immediately something's off, something's wrong, what's going on, let me not only get help, but try and do what I can do. Mm -hmm. God had great mercy on her the two times she passed. Without question. Great mercy. Without question. And I love that you said that, that he had great mercy because he does always have great mercy he upon mercy us. He had mercy on my little prayer. <laughs> who am I sitting over there? Well, you know what, though? You say little old me, but we know who we are in Christ, we right? Know. But I love that you were the one that the doctors said your mom was coherent and we chose, or not we chose, we realized we have to follow her we have to follow her wishes of she not was to coherent yeah exactly she was alert and oriented and i love that you said well i don't love it obviously but that they they chose that they couldn't resuscitate her mm -hmm. that they weren't going to resuscitate her there. Mm -hmm. but god is the great resuscitator mm -hmm. right we know what he can do in in a life in a in a death in a near death we know what Amen. he can do nobody's ever dead until he decides Amen. but I love that he's the great resuscitator. I also, I also really just, wow, that moment of your mom describing hell. her encounter with hell and just what that meant and that gripping, hand gripping fear, fear that she was gripping the bed, screaming out, and the fact that you said, just scream out Jesus' name. Yeah, call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Thank you for correcting me because I always want to get the words right. That yeah. you cut off the devil the upon enemy. your mother. Mm -hmm. You cut, The Lord used you to, to scream into your mother to cut it off mm -hmm. because he knew that he had a prayer warrior in that hallway mm -hmm. that was watching everything. Mm -hmm. And he knew that the little old me of you was no little old me that you had a fire inside of you mm -hmm. that was not going to allow. Hold, hold this. <laughs> that was not going to allow 
your mother to not be in eternity with him and with Amen. you one day. You you were not willing to lose your mother to that. No. So praise God that Amen. he allowed you to be used there. Amen. I also really love that your mom and you, you know, I love that you allowed your relationship with your mom and you to be shared as far as the way that it was before. Mm -hmm. Because I think that we all have loved ones that we know are half in and half out, you know, or that they know about Jesus, they they care about Jesus, but they're just not interested in much more than, you know, they don't, they don't choose to see how much of an impact he can really have in their life and in their walk on a day to day, because they just, they know that he loves them and that's enough for them and that's it. And Jesus loves me, you know, and, but your relationship with your mom could only go so far when eternity is at stake. You know, when you know that your mom and you beforehand, you said you didn't see the fruit. And I understand what you mean with that with people that we love. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people listening would understand what you mean with that because it's very common. Mm -hmm. But there was a relationship that got rebuilt after that situation. You were able to suddenly have a new mm -hmm. found relationship with mm -hmm. your mom, a different kind of connection, mm -hmm. because she was, she literally faced death. But more than that, she faced death without God. She faced separation from God. For eternity, yeah. And she only had a couple of moments with it, but we know eternity is forever mm -hmm. and she was able to be brought back fished back mm -hmm. even when she had it in 2015 and you all locked hands mm -hmm. and the enemy was trying so hard in that hospital room to break your hands from one another to break your prayers for your mom the channel. to break exactly mm -hmm. the channel to get to mm -hmm. christ mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. again Jesus has the final say. He does. The Lord has the final say upon all of us. And I love that there was so much faith and, you know, fighting the war. You were fighting a war for your mom, mm -hmm. you know, when you were praying together and you and your siblings and you were trying to share the gospel, you were literally fighting against the powers of darkness. Yeah. In every single way. And it's hard to go against a parent. They're the authority figure. Yes. And we were like trying to speak the authority yes. into them. I understand. I actually very much so understand. <laughs> but, you know, you, you, said a, you said a lot of different things in your story. And obviously, you know, the word of God is so powerful. So I, I'm not even going to re-quote the scriptures that you shared. Because mm -hmm. I just... I. I love all those scriptures. Mm. They really speak to my heart on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And I love that you chose those scriptures to, to share from the tip of your heart and the tip of your tongue, you know, because the word of God is so powerful. When we speak the word of God over people we love, whether they believe or not, the impact that we can see over their life and over what he can do in just, like you said, one little prayer, what he can do is so beyond our comprehension that it's it it can fill us and move us and inspire us in ways that we can hold on to for the rest of our mm -hmm. life <clears throat> we will need the the word of god now in these times yes to speak over situations you can no longer just say your prayers you will need yes to quote the scripture 100 because be that's our authority but you Hallelujah. said it. amen sorry <laughs> no, amen. I love yeah. that. But you said a word throughout your story and I just, I love it because it's something that we prayed beforehand. And, you know, I love when that happens. And I particularly love this word because it's just, it makes the God of all the universes who's so... Tangible. Yes. He's who's here. so... Yeah. <laughs> vast and amazing and wow just right here yeah. and near to us mm -hmm. and I love it because the word that you said was he hears us mm -hmm. and you know you started with that he was hearing you 
praying in, in the hallway, little old me praying in the hallway. And he heard your mom screaming. He heard you go in there mm -hmm. and intercede. He heard all of you locking your hands and, and praying on behalf of your mom in 2015. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a God who hears us. Amen. We have a God who is, who can seem so far away because when we look at the world around us and we look at everything that's created by him, it can make him seem almost like he's untouchable. But he's not. He's right here. He is. Because he hears us. And all we have to say is his name. Amen. Jesus, Father. He's with us Lord. through every affliction. He's with us everything. and he hears us. Mm -hmm. And I love that you kept on saying that throughout your story, that he hears us because it makes him so much more of somebody that we can just hold on to mm -hmm. that while he's holding on to us we can hold on to him amen while he's taking us through we can could trust in him yes. we can trust that he's going to guide us and lead us and walk our hands in hands he never lets go we do he doesn't but you know <laughs> i love that we have a god who sees us and and cares for us but but who hears us that all we have to do is just say Lord, throughout the whole day, we can choose to have a conversation whenever we want, however we choose, because he cares about his children. He hears his children. He knows his children's voice. Mm -hmm. Because we have a God who hears us and knows his children's voice, we have the opportunity to live our life in his love. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If you like what you just experienced, please subscribe and share this story with a friend. You're welcome to take a seat with us at Experience Church in Beth Page, Long Island, or you can visit us on our website at www.experiencechurch AG. You can also follow us on our social media platforms listed in the description. We pray that you too can experience what it's like to live your life in God's love. Be blessed.